So welcome everybody to Group Hub's weekly solar talks. This week we are focused on energy service companies. How do they work? How do they actually get you green energy? And I think the the example of this that I think, you know, at least once a week, somebody asks us on social media or email, you know, I've heard of Green Mountain Energy, I've heard of Arcadia, I've heard of Clean Choice, which is why we got them here, but I don't really understand how they're getting me green energy and what it does to affect my bill. So we decided that we wanted to do a whole topic around it and get some experts in here to explain it to you guys. So I'm going to do a quick intro just about Group Hug in case you're new here, and then I'm going to pass it over to Kathleen at, Green, at Clean Choice to take it over. So hello and welcome. At Group Hug, we make ridiculously good looking solar panels that are easy to use because renewable energy is too complicated and we want to make it easier and more fun for you to choose green. A quick overview. Our first product is the window solar charger. It is a solar panel that attaches to your window. There's a built-in battery inside and USB ports. You can charge things off the grid. I'm not gonna talk about our whole company, but if you would like to learn more, you can go to grouphugsolar.com. You'll see that we added this little tab here called events where you can look at new events coming up and you can also look at videos for old events that were in the past. We've been doing solar talks every week. So there's some really good stuff from community solar to how artists use solar panels, everything, everything in between. And if you want more daily content, you can follow us at Group Hug Solar on Instagram or Facebook. LinkedIn, Twitter, all of the things. We're actually not on TikTok yet, but people ask me, I feel like I'm too old to figure out how to even do that. Emma, I'm going to make I'm going to make that one of your one of your assignments. <laughs> one of your assignments to figure out. One day we will be on TikTok. Um, next week we do not have a webinar because it is Thanksgiving. I know everyone's taking a break. Hopefully everyone gets a break from Zoom in general and you can step away from your computers. So there is no webinar next week and we'll reach out and, and let you know what's happening the week, the week after that. A quick plug for us is that we are running, Emma and I, we are running a solar gingerbread contest. Actually, Clean Choice team, you guys should totally enter this contest. Um, what it is, is you can go to groupogsolar.com slash gingerbread to register. Entries are due December 8th. And we basically just want you to have fun at home with a holiday activity you might already be doing. But if you add edible solar panels to your creation, you could win a window solar charger. We're gonna judge all of the entries and we're gonna give the top four free solar chargers. So it's a great way to involve your family, have fun, and also win, win a free holiday gift. So now I'm going to pass it over to Kathleen, um, who is gonna talk about clean choice and really explain all of the nitty gritty of how this works. So, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Here we go. And yeah, Kathleen, go ahead. Thank you so much. And uh, Jenny, do you have the presentation? If you want to pull that up, you can share that. It's so good to be with you guys. Um, I am currently in Washington, DC at a farmer's market selling clean energy. Um, so I'm going to kind of introduce the company a little bit and then I'll turn it over to my manager, Jenny Murphy, to go in depth. Um, I'll be here with you guys the whole time, but I'm going to head back to my table um, once I give a quick intro. So, you know, again, thank you so much for being um, here with us. If you're here, you already know, I'm sure you already understand, you know, we're in a dire situation when it comes to climate. Um, and we want to talk about, you know, what what do we have the power to do? You know, let's talk about power. Let's talk about how we're powering our home, how we can take our power back, um, and how we can continue to move the ball forward so we can transform the grid and hopefully, you know, mitigate climate change. So what we're going to talk about today um, is Clean Choice and our founder and mission, which um, helps, I think, really drive us every day and really connects me to the company and what we're doing. We'll do a quick um, little Electric Choice 101, talk about how the energy grid works. Uh, we'll talk about you know, um, how you can choose clean electricity with Clean Choice um, and an offer that we've got, a special group hub offer. So um, uh, Jenny and Rob will be here to answer any questions you have. I know some of you are interested in ESCOs, RECs, and kind of all that. So, you know, ask those questions after we kind of dive in a little bit. So 
clean choice. Um, we were founded in 20, uh, 2010, or actually this was 2010. Our founder, Tom Massey, actually, it's just about a mile from where we're at now. He had his home in Adams Morgan, DC. Um, and he really wanted to get solar panels installed on his rooftop. And this was because he actually is from, I don't know if we've got any Pennsylvanians on the call. Um, I'm a fellow Pennsylvanian. And he lived in Pittsburgh, PA. And if you know anything about Pittsburgh, you know that it's coal and steel country. Um, and he grew up there in a, in a, his parents grew up there in a town that was very polluted. And this was a little bit pre-EPA when we had a lot of the environmental regulations that protected our, our air quality. Um, and unfortunately, you know, kind of a long story short, they would have to brush off the soot of their front porch every, um, uh, sorry, I was distracted by the message. Um, what happened was they would have to wipe off this black soot on their front porch every morning. And, and we know that that was the pollution. And unfortunately, Tom's father and uh, many of their neighbors all died from the same type of cancer. Um, and, you know, Tom kind of deduced this was due from that pollution. And he really didn't want to partake in that anymore. So he went ahead in 2010 to try to install solar panels on his rooftop in Adams Morgan here in D.C. And the process was a real challenge for him. It was really expensive. Um, it was kind of arduous. He had to go through a lot of loopholes and legal um, issues to kind of get these panels up on his roof. So he created Clean Choice Energy out of this to create a better solution. So you can be a renter um, and, and sign up for this. You can be a homeowner who already has solar, um, but maybe it's not providing 100% of your energy. Um, so this is a way to just buy into that clean energy market. It. And really, at the end of the day, our mission is to mitigate climate change. And that's really why we're here. Um, we, we know we don't have a ton of time left to significantly reduce our impact on the planet. And, you know, we're here to, to help you understand what your options are and hopefully, you know, get you enrolled. So I'm going to turn it over to Jenny Murphy. Um, she's my manager. She's incredible. I love farmers markets because Jenny, I met Jenny at a farmers market and that's how we, I got to work this company. Um, I've been with the company for about two years and just love it. And I really hope um, that, you know, that together we can really, you know, as you see, work towards uh, a world free of catastrophic climate change. Um, so Jenny, thank you so much for taking over. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy the presentation. Hey everybody, super excited to be here. Um, happy to talk about our mission, which is working towards a world free of catastrophic climate change with clean air and renewable energy. I'm going to just kind of do a uh, Energy 101, because lots of times I find that folks don't really understand, you know, like, what does it mean? How do I get electricity? If you're like me, you just want to walk in the room, flip a switch, and, you know, illumination, right? So I just wanted to review a little bit about how we get our electricity, where it comes from, how it comes to us. Um, electricity is generated in a power plant, and it's generated from, uh, from fuel sources such as coal, oil, natural gas, uh, or nuclear energy. It can also be generated from renewable sources, such as wind and solar farms. All electricity that's generated, no matter from where, goes into the grid. The grid is, and let's talk about the grid because once again, it's hard to wrap our brains around it, but this is how it really works. All electricity that's generated is sent via transmission lines. And I know you've seen these things anywhere out there in the world. It goes through these transmission lines to transformers that are at the utility plant. And the utility is what services your area. So if you're in New York, you know, your utility is Con Edison. If you're in uh, Penn, you know, Philadelphia, your utility is PICO. If you're in um, DC, it's PEPCO. So you know who your utility uh, provider is. That's where the electricity is going into their, their transformers. So what happens then? So the electricity is then transmitted from the, tra from the transformers as moving electrons through a series of wires that are connected to your home. So electricity is generated, it goes through wires to the transformers, from the transformers through additional wires right to your home. Um, so from generation sites, series of transmission lines, 
to the utility, through wires, to your home, and this makes up the grid. It's literally a series of wires from one place to another sending us electricity. So there are, so let's talk about choice for a second. Electricity is uh, regulated or deregulated depending upon what state you live in. Um, I know there's somebody on here from Texas, shout out to Texas. Uh, you know a lot about deregulated energy markets. I believe in Texas, you must choose an ESCO, an energy service company. Um, places like New York, um, Massachusetts, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and others have the choice. They may choose. And then there are the other states across the, um, the, the United States that, may, that have no cho choice at all. So those states are regulated, have no choice. For us here, we have a choice. We can choose the supplier of electricity. Um, what does this mean? If you live in Delaware, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and DC, you can choose 100% renewable energy um, transmitted to you through the utility grid. You can get 100% clean, pollution-free energy. There's no change in your utility. As a matter of fact, you couldn't change it if you wanted to. If you live in New York, Con Edison delivers your energy. Nobody else can do it. Um, there are no service interruptions. There's no installation project. There is no sign-up fee. There's no cancellation fee. And there is no change in electric reliability. So remember, all electricity that's generated goes into the grid and is distributed through the wires. What does that mean? Why should I choose clean energy, right? Why should I choose wind and solar over oil and coal? All of our electricity is generated regionally, goes into the, the grid on your behalf. On your utility bill, you're gonna see your supply charges and you're gonna know that all the dollars that you spent on supply go to clean choice clean choice will take that and they will buy only regionally sourced wind and solar electricity all of that goes into the grid on your behalf what does that mean we start to clean up and green up the grid more people who choose uh green electricity uh we start to create um a demand right so what does that mean we build more wind farms we build more solar plants um, instead of coal and oil plants, uh, as, as we have more now. Hey, Jennifer, um, I want to ask you a quick question, just sure. something that popped into my mind. You were saying, so I live in New York, so I have Con Ed, and I don't have any other choices, like you just said. Um, who actually owns, like, the power plant? Like, who, like, is it, is it like a, you know, like, anyone can start a power plant, or does Con Ed also own the power plant? Great, great question. So if you're um, old enough to be me, back in the dinosaur days, Con Edison owned the power plants. There were literally Con Edison power plants all throughout New York City. Um, but when deregulation came along, the government stepped in and said, you know something, you can't do everything. You can't generate electricity and sell it and deliver it. Right, so they broke it up. Um, kind of, let's compare it to when you know there was only one phone service. Right, there was only you know uh, Ma Bell in New York. If we're going to stick with the New York analogy, and you know they did everything. Um, so deregulation means that no, you can no longer generate supply and sell it. So. Con Edison, since it owns the infrastructure, the grid, the wires and the poles, is only in charge of delivery. If you take a quick look at your bill, or a long look, because they're complicated, not easy to read, you will see that there are three pieces to your bill. There's a portion for supply, taxes, and delivery. Con Edison is going to deliver your electricity, and that is no getting around that, but you can choose your supplier. Now, if you make no choice, which very often happens because there's a lot of confusion out there, 
If you don't make a choice, Con Edison will choose a supplier for you. And it's typically a system mix. There's a lot of coal, oil, nuclear, there's methane in there. Uh, in New York City right now, please, uh, you know, don't hold me to this exact number. I believe that there must be 22% of renewables in that mix. Oh, wow. Right? I didn't know that. I'll have to yeah. look that up. Yeah. 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 It's about 22 to 25% of the system mix. That's what you're getting if you don't make a choice. Uh, has renewables in it. So there is a little bit of wind, there's a little bit of solar in there, but there's a lot of coal, there's a lot of oil, there's nuclear energy, um, there's methane, as I said, fracked gas, of course, makes up a huge portion of that mix as well. So what we're asking folks to do is choose your supplier. Um, there are hundreds of suppliers out there. There are multiple reasons for choosing a supplier. Uh, some people will choose a supplier because they want to save money, right? Cost is a big factor. Uh, some people will choose a supplier because their Aunt Bess is selling it, you know, so they'll sign up with her. Other folks will choose a supplier because they're on a rewards program. So, you know, use X amount of kilowatt hours and, you know, get a free toaster or whatever you want. So lots of reasons to choose a supplier. Why do we want you to choose Clean Choice? 100% of your dollars will go to purchase only wind and solar generated electricity, regionally sourced, so that your dollars are helping to support the growth of this industry here in our area. Yeah. Hey, Texas, that again. Again, not that it's a bad thing to get wind energy from Texas. There's lots of wind in Texas. But isn't it better to grow this industry here um, and develop, you know, lots and lots of clean energy jobs? Um, so I hope that answered your question. Might have been yeah, awesome. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we only supply 100% clean energy from wind and solar farms um, that are here regionally sourced. Um, we make a bigger impact for our customers by sourcing regional newer wind and solar power. So here's something that we, you know, that it's hard to think about. Lots of people talk about hydroelectricity, right? Well, what's wrong with hydroelectricity? Nothing. Obviously, it's great. However, hydroelectricity has been around for a long time and we at Clean Choice believe the, the investment needs to be made in new wind and solar powered, uh, wind and solar power. Once again, we can have, I, can, I can spend every hour of the next month on this conversation. <laughs> We could talk about hydroelectricity and, you know, the positives and negatives. We at Clean Choice choose wind and solar only because it's a new industry that we want to help develop. Bringing cleaner air closer to you, your home, supporting, again, the growth of the renewable energy industry where we live. Um, why Clean Choice Energy? Unlike some other um, ESCOs, and I know that we talked about Green Mountain, but they're not the only one. There is a bunch of them. Uh, they are um, owned by a huge oil conglomerate. In Green Mountain's case, it's NRG. They're a huge oil conglomerate, billions and billions of dollars. Um, and so clean energy is one arm of their, you know, their outreach, what do I, you know, Help me out. I don't know. It's only one arm of their industry, right? So they've yeah, got it's lots not like Green Mountain is not NRG's priority, right? Like it's it's one one subsidiary that that of their does whole this. Industry. Yeah, totally. Exactly. So you know they get it. You know green energy is cool. That's wonderful. You know let's jump on that bandwagon and sell some green energy. It's all great. Um, in New York. We are the only, and I mean only, and you can check this out if anybody wants to, I can share the New York State report with you. The only energy 
service company that sells only 100% wind and solar. Nothing else is in our mix. Um, if you go to this report, I'm happy to share the link with you. You will see there is everything in everybody else's mix from fracked gas to coal. How do you sell a product that you're telling people is, you know, green energy and there's coal in it? I don't know. Um, I don't work for those companies. Once again, I'm just trying to explain how we're different. Um, and Jennifer, we actually, we, we're getting some questions in the chat. So if you want to keep going with your presentation and then that way we can. Chat. No, let's chat. So um, David just asked that Clean Choice seems like a broker and not a supplier. So are there any suppliers of are there any suppliers that are also the producers of clean energy? So like, are any power plants also the, the providers, I think is what he's asking. So it's a great question. Uh, and I think David, if I'm, if I hear your question correctly, please forgive me if I don't. Uh, do we own the wind and solar farms? Um, we do not, but we are a member of the utility grid. What this means, for us is that it is our job to put the energy into the grid. So there are lots of other companies out there that will go out and they will purchase, you know, they'll, they'll um, purchase clean electricity and sell it to you. They'll purchase renewable energy credits and, and sell it to you. We are members of the grid. That means that we have a responsibility to put, to make sure that energy goes into the grid whether we have customers or not. Does that make sense? I, I, I'm not an expert, don't want to get bogged down with too many details, but if that's what you mean by broker, if not, please give me another word. Yeah, and actually, Jennifer, I think going to that point, like um, renewable energy credits or RECs is something that is pretty, um, like, pretty industry jargon specific. And I think the average person, it's a little confusing. So do you want to talk a little bit about what, what that actually means? Like what is a renewable energy credit? Sure, I would love to talk about it. And I, you typically don't, as a matter of fact, Kathleen's going to yell at me tomorrow because she had a slide on Rex. And I said, no way, I don't want to talk about Rex. It's very confusing. Oh. So I like, to, I like to dumb everything down. Sorry, folks, I keep it simple. Um, when you have a lump of coal, you can hold it in your hand. You have some oil, <laughs> you know, a, a pint of oil or whatever, you can hold it, it's tangible. With electricity that's generated from wind and solar, can't hold it, it's not tangible, right? There's nothing there there. So the, the solution to that is to prevent, to um, I'm sorry, to create a renewable energy credit. Basically, every time the windmill woof, spins around, generates kilowatt of electricity, there is a document that says, yes, this is generated and it's gone into the grid, right? So being a part, so being a member of the utility grid also means that, yes, this energy is generated, has gone into the grid, Here's your certificate to show you that this is so. And then that certificate is taken and retired. So it can never be used again. So that we still have to continue to generate electricity and solar. It cannot be resold. So a REC is kind of like a unit of measure um, so that like clean, clean power plants, like a wind farm or a solar farm, can like measure how much clean electricity they're creating so that it's differentiated from regular electricity. Is that, is that kind of right? Yeah, I mean, to me, once again, that the way my brain works is, like I said before earlier, I wanna go in the room, flip the switch, I wanna think of any of this. But yes, a REC, Renewable Energy Credit, it's kind of like your certificate that yes, this windmill did turn, it did generate this electricity, this electricity did go into the grid on your behalf. Got it. I, I think that's an excellent explanation, Jenny, and if I could just jump in really quickly. You know, one thing that we hear a lot about is yeah. carbon offsets. 
Um, and a lot of times people are purchasing recs as a carbon offset. And obviously we love that because it's encouraging people to buy into the clean energy market. Um, but just a little distinction between um, what some of our competitors do, which is buy recs. Um, we actually pay for that new clean energy to be purchased and then we buy the rec that goes along with it. So it's accounted for, so no one else can buy it. So it's kind of um, really doubling your impact because you're not just buying those recs, you're actually paying for that energy to go into the grid. So um, it makes a little bit bigger of an impact. And if anybody wants to get into the weeds with me on this, please send me an email. I love to, I love to jargon, so. I definitely do. I find, I find the whole rec system like fascinating. And I think for people like, for people to kind of imagine what electricity is, a lot of like in engineering school, when you learn about electricity or even in, you know, in middle school, you think about it as water, right? And Jennifer gave an explanation of the grid and it's kind of like when that electricity or like that, think of it as water enters the grid, it's just water. Like you don't, you don't know where the water came from. You can't route the water a specific way. So I think recs are a way of saying like, okay, in the grid, this is, these are the certificates to tell you what the mix is. Because if you were just to measure the electricity, it just, you know, it's volts, it's amps. It doesn't say this is a solar watt. Like you, you exactly. don't know. All you don't know. Exactly. All electricity that's generated, whether it's from burning coal, oil, frack gas, wind, solar, there's no way to separate those electrons. They all go into the flow. Yeah. And I, and I use an analogy just like, I mean, I think that, that the water analogy is wonderful. I use it myself. It's kind of like a bathtub. Like the grid is like a big bathtub. And you turn on the faucet and all the electricity is pouring in, right? So you have the dirty faucet and the clean faucet. And right now our dirty water is powered up. But for more people, for every single one of us who choose clean energy, we start to put more green water into the mix. And that's why I say we start to green up our grid. Cool. I think I, I'll, keep, I'll keep monitoring the chat, Jennifer, but if you want to keep going, I would say we've got like, you know, 10 minutes left. So if you want to talk for like five more sure. minutes and then we'll open up more questions. So it's just, um, what else makes us different? I think we talked about the fact that this is all we do. We're not owned by a huge uh, oil conglomerate. Uh, we're not an arm. This is all we do. We're also a B Corporation certified company. Does ev anyone out there uh, or any, do you know what a B certified core is? Um, what it means is that we have um, joined the corporations to uh, ensure that all the work that we do. So what we're doing is we are marrying sustainability and integrity with making a profit, right? So we have a commitment to our employees, to our communities, to our, you know, environment that, you know, we're going to be a hundred percent on board with taking care of you, uh, yeah, do we make a profit? Yes, we're a for-profit company, but we want to be held accountable to all of these other aspects of everybody's day in, day out life. So, so B Corporation certification is super important to us and we're really proud of it. It's not an easy certification to get, so we're, we're really happy about that. Um, uh, and the last thing I will say is that once again, we source regionally. Again, not a bad thing to get wind wrecks from California or Texas, not bad. However, we support wind energy growth, I applaud. Uh, however, isn't it better if we develop this, reg this region where we live, this area? Um, and, so, and so we believe that. Together we can heal our planet. We can do this. There's not a lot I can do as an individual to support um, the greening up of our planet. I can do, I can recycle. I can bring my reusable bags to the supermarket. I can buy less packaging. I can do this. This is easy. Uh, it's easier than schlepping my bottles out to the curb every week. 
it's easier than uh, thumping my head when I go into the supermarket because I left my bags in the car. Um, this happens automatically on our behalf. It's simply a matter of paying for green electricity instead of dirty electricity. You don't have to think about it. And it's very impactful. Um, clean Choice Energy, 100% renewable energy supplier. We also have community solar. We can talk to Kathleen about that as well. Um, together, our customers have prevented a total of about 4.3 billion pounds of carbon emissions, and we're still counting. And that's the equivalent of taking 2 billion, over 2 billion pounds of coal from being burned each year, or taking over 400,000 cars off the road for a year. Uh, it's like preserving almost 2 billion acres of forest. So sometimes we kind of think, oh, this isn't gonna matter, you know, what difference can I make? We can, we can make a difference. And I implore everybody to be a part of the change. You know, we can make a change. We are doing this. We could do it together um, and no contribution is too small. So, um, oh, actually perfect. I didn't even realize this was the next slide. So I'll talk about this special collaboration. And then Jennifer, we did get a bunch of other questions. So I'm, I'll, there, some of them are pretty, pretty meaty questions. So I think we should definitely answer them. So um, for anyone that is watching and is interested in clean choice and learning more, and, and I, I think one thing we didn't talk about is that a lot of times when you think about clean energy, solar energy or wind energy, I think specifically with solar, you might think that you have to own a house to do it or you have to own a building to be able to do it. And I think this is part of the work that I do at Group Hug is just showing people their options that if you literally have a sunny window, you can do something like with our product. If you get an electric bill, you can choose where your energy comes from, like what Clean Choice is doing. So if anyone is interested in talking to Clean Choice and wants to sign up, um, I will send everybody a follow-up email who registered for the webinar. And if you do that, we'll give you $50 off of a group hug charger, courtesy of Clean Choice. So I think, you know, like, um, like Jennifer said, there's so many different choices that we can make. And I think there's not really one green choice that solves all of our problems. And sometimes it takes a myriad of solutions to to make a difference. So if you are interested, we we want to reward you and, and make sure that you know you you feel good making that change. So I will follow up with the details in an email so that you guys can act on it if you would like. Um, and then Kathleen, uh, sorry, Jennifer, do you mind unsharing your screen so we could see everybody? Absolutely. And then I'm and then I'll I'll ask some of these questions. So um, David, I think wants to dig a little deeper into how the energy exchange actually happens. And I, I think, um, I'm gonna, David, I'm gonna paraphrase some of your questions, but I, I was thinking about this before the call. So maybe we'll do, we'll do like a quick, I don't know if this will work. We'll do a quick like Zoom role play, okay? So Jennifer, you're gonna be clean choice. How about um, Emma, you can be the, um, the wind farm, okay? I'll be, I'll be the fossil fuel plant, even though that's not what I want. So what David is saying is like, let's say Emma owns the wind. Emma, can you wave? Make a, make a windmill. Can you <laughs> mime a windmill? There you go. Emma, Emma owns a wind farm. Okay. So her wind farm is producing electricity. So David's first question is, does Emma's wind farm get to just release their electricity on the grid without someone buying it? Or do they need a buyer to turn on the wind, the wind turbine? Does that make sense? It does make sense. And that's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a, a, a quick answer for that. That's okay. Um, I, to my understanding, David, and please forgive me, um, to my understanding, Electricity is produced and has nowhere to go except to the grid, right? We don't have storage systems that can hold all that electricity right now. 
Right. Electricity is generated and goes right into the grid. That's why we have the renewable energy certificates. And those are what, you know, we purchase to, you know, make sure that we have verified that that electricity has been generated, has gone into the grid. Uh, Jim, uh, I, could pass, I could probably answer this one only because I just did some research on it. Um, in terms of the wind and solar farms, they are able to, uh, so to answer the question, uh, it's always running. It's always running. Um, in the event that they overproduce or there's nowhere to go, they actually can store it in batteries um, and lead batteries. Um, very volatile. Another way they do is convert it into heat and they store it in uh, water um, deep on the ground um, until it's actually needed. Um, so, uh, yeah, but like what Jenny was saying in terms of the ESCO, in terms of the Rex, yes. But, uh, but it's always generating, it's always going. And uh, they basically, um, uh, they can store a certain amount of energy in uh, batteries and or convert it to heat and are stored within water and, uh, you know, uh, release it to the grid when, you know, there's a wreck um, uh, for that particular amount that's needed by an ESCO. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, and then we're, to continue the analogy, David had a, had a bunch of good questions. So let's say Emma, Emma, Emma's wind turbine farm is going. She's making electricity. Who determines the price of electricity from Emma's farm? Like if I'm the power plant, let's say I should actually know this. Let's say my electricity is like five cents per watt. Can Emma be like mine's four cents? Like how, who, who gets to, I wish, right? Who gets to decide what that price is? Is that up to Emma? Is that up to someone else? So great question again. So pricing of electricity, as everybody knows, is super volatile. Um, it changes all the time. It goes up and down and there are lots of reasons. You know, um, a hurricane can hit you know, an oil rig and all of a sudden the price of oil skyrockets, right? So pricing, super, super complicated. We have a whole, whole team dedicated to pricing. What I can tell you is this, we are committed to keeping our price fair. It is more expensive typically to, you know, only because it's new energy to, you know, it's more expensive to buy wind and solar generate electricity than it is oil and coal. Gas, fracked gas, super cheap right now, right? Oil, coal, dirt cheap. You can buy it real cheap. So is it like the, the kind of the middle, like clean choice, like the, as the broker has say in what the price is basically? Yes, we okay. do the price fixing, absolutely. Yep. Got it. Absolutely. And then I want to, Jennifer, sorry to cut you off. I want to squeeze in one more question because then we're, we usually try to wrap around uh, 645. So then yes. um, the, the follow-up question is, do, um, do like, um, for lack of a better words, do brokers like clean choice who kind of buy and sell uh, to meet to meet that demand for clean energy? Do you guys feel like you compete with a lot of other suppliers? Like what does the landscape look like for companies like clean choice? That's um, a wonderful, wonderful question. Uh, once again, we feel really comfortable and confident with our product and our pricing. So it's hard to compare our product to every single other product, we really feel that, you know, that there, there are not many other companies out there that choose only wind and solar and only regionally sourced product. So what we, um, we're very, very competitive in our pricing. For folks um, on this webinar tonight, our price will be about a penny and a half to two pennies more per kilowatt than whatever you know your utility is charging right now, um, and and it will lock that rate in for a year, which is something that typically utilities do not do. So we're taking today's utility rate, which is dirty energy, um, penny and a half to two pennies more per kilowatt hour for the average, um, you know, for the average customer. It could be anywhere from eight to twelve bucks more a month. I mean, we really can't give a a, a a definite number until we do a bill analysis. Happy to do a bill analysis with everybody. Grab a copy of your bill, call Kathleen, Rob, or I, and we'll review your bill with you and tell you exactly what the difference is gonna be. 
Yeah, um, that's amazing. Hey, Jennifer, yeah. I one more question because I think I think David kind of alluded to this and you talked about it in your presentation, but can multiple suppliers buy the same rec? No. So as I said before, and I did allude to it, you're right. So we purchase a rec and it's retired. What retired means is that that's it, goes in the lockbox, can't use it again. Okay. But like, I guess like for, for, I know that's what you guys do, but like in general, only one person can buy a rec, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. David's going to have to dig a little bit deeper into that. I'm sure there are some shady deals out there where, you know, and I don't know, sorry, I'm not meaning to say that this Oh is, no, that's okay. I, I just, you know, there, there is, there is some digging to do there. It's just out, you know, like I, I know that there are other ways to deal with wrecks, but as far as the way we deal with them, we purchase a wreck and it's retired. Which is the right way to do yeah, it. For exactly. sure. I, I think, yeah, I think, I think like that's where whenever I talk to people who ask me like, is Green Mountain Energy real? Like, how does that work? And I'm like, well, like, I, I like, you know, ex exactly what you said, like, this is how it works. You're supporting energy on the grid. It's not necessarily going to your house, but it's on, it's the proportion of the grid. And it's exactly right. And here's the quick reason. I know we're, we're stressed for time. All electricity that's generated goes into the grid. Even if you have solar panels on top of your roof, the electricity that's being generated off of those panels on your roof goes first to the grid and then back to your home. So even if you have solar panels on your roof, you're getting the grid electricity. Uh, unless you have batteries, yeah. Um, yeah, I, unless you have batteries, and some people do, all right? Yeah. I've met a couple of them. They're crazy woodsmen that live off the grid. If anybody wants to live off the grid, totally possible to do. Most people that I have met don't wanna live off the grid. So uh, if you wanna be grid tied, this is the only way to support clean energy right now. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you guys so much. And thank you, David, for asking those really good questions. This this is recorded, so we'll, we'll post it and share it with our audience so that hopefully we'll get more comments and questions on the video. Um, Jennifer and Rob, thank you so much. I know Kathleen jumped off, but thank you. Thank you to Kathleen. Emma, thank you for being our wind farm. And no problem. <laughs> yes, wind farm. Um, and with that, I know it's the week before a holiday, so I hope everyone has a great weekend. Have a great holiday next week. Everyone stay safe, wear masks, stay home, and we will see you in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.